Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to be playing 18 holes of stroke play. I'm going to break this up into two parts, but I want to talk about how I started playing better golf. That was 112 yards with a nice approach wedge. About 20 feet for birdie. Not bad. Oh my, let's go. What a start. We're going to be playing some good golf today. We just started off hole number one with a birdie. I didn't get to record my tee shot simply because. I don't like to break out my camera when there's like five people standing on the tee box. So anyways, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, drop a like, drop a comment, and uh, we're trying to grow the channel. We just hit over a thousand subscribers and over a million views on YouTube, which is awesome. So uh, we're just going to continue to grow it. So anyways, I hope you all enjoy and let's play some good golf today. We have a short par four here. No real reason to really hit driver, but we're going to anyways, try and uh, start off strong. So I have a good aiming point. You can see that little green pine tree out in the center. That's where I'm kind of aiming at. So we hit the opposite of a cut. Hit a nice little draw off the tree. Should have about a 125 in a bit. Now I want to tell you guys how I started playing better golf. And it really comes down to just a few things. We have 75 yards. The pin is in a great location. We should be able to stick this one pretty close. Have lob wedge in hand. Gonna hit a pretty, pretty full swing here. If it goes past, it should come back down. I left it right. Missed it right, just had perfect distance. Just, uh, oh, I think I was aimed right there. Nice little testy 25 footer here. Oh my goodness. Coming off of a pretty unstressful par we just made on hall number two, we're currently sitting at one under through two. I want to talk about how I actually got good at golf. So I've been playing for the past 20 years now, um, or 21 probably. Ever since I could really hold a golf club in my hand, I've been playing golf. The cool thing about this is I've never had a lesson. I'm pretty much completely self-taught. My dad helped me out with a few things um, here and there, but how I really got good is I watched a lot of pro golf. <laughs> so this is a great example of why you should watch the pros. The pros here, are still really not going to aim right at the flag simply because there's three yards to the right of the flag. If you miss it right, you're off the green. I'm gonna aim just a touch left, two yards left, hit it right at it. It didn't strike that good. But we're barely on the front of the green. Believe it or not, watching pro golfers, they all do something very uncommon. They're all really successful in playing golf. So if you start paying attention to everything that they're doing, how they're putting, how they're chipping, how they're hitting their full shots, how they're hitting their drivers, if you start trying to copy that, typically things will start to work out for you because you are copying the professionals. <laughs> this is another great example of playing the safer shot. I could chip this shot since I am off the green, however, the ground is wet, so I have a really good chance of chunking this chip if I chip it. I had that breaking right and it just never went right. You got about three and a half feet to try and make our par. All right in the heart, let's go. Just pulled my head off of that shot so bad. Obviously, watching pro golf isn't going to be the only thing that gets you good at golf. It's just something that really helped me. I watched a ton of it growing up, and I think that projected myself forward a little bit. 
However, you do still have to hit a lot of golf balls. Now, although I did hit a lot of golf balls, I didn't hit as many as some people. Um, I didn't have the best setup growing up. I played at a course called Tunnel Hill and that, it was literally called the Cow Pasture was the name of the course. If that doesn't say anything, it was like playing on concrete with some grass in some places. Now I do want to give y'all some tip, not only on the golf course, but also at the driving range. So when you go to the driving range, if you are consistently hitting a slice, hitting a hook, hitting it thin, hitting it fat, whatever it may be, something has to change. I see so many people come up to a driving range and just hit a ball. They see it go right, place the ball, hit a ball, and not think about what they're doing. How are they messing up? And if you simply take the time in between the shots just to think about what you're trying to do, what you're trying to fix, you're going to improve a lot faster. Now we have 225 yards here. This is a little bit riskier of a shot because we are on a downhill lie. I'm gonna hit hybrid instead of full iron. Just because the ball will come out a little higher with this, I believe. I go left, definitely the miss here. We did that. That's the miss I was aiming for. We missed about 20 yards left. I hit it toey, so I hit a nice draw there. The next driving range tip I want to give you is start picking an aim point. Because if you don't do that and you just start blindly hitting golf balls into an open field, you're also not going to improve at all because you don't know what you're aiming at. So simply set down an alignment stick, pick your target and start hitting it at that uh, and that'll give you a good reference am i hitting the ball right or left you know whatever it may be and you can start analyzing your mistakes when you start playing on the course things start to get a little bit different you're going to want to start practicing short game and even though it's not as fun you have to do it if you want to get good at golf there's a reason why one of the best golfers of all time tiger woods his dad made him learn from the green backwards that that says something because he is the best golfer in the world and you know it's uh it's tough to argue that fact there's also a reason why the pros spend i think it's like 70 or 80 percent of their practice inside of 100 yards so this is a tough little field shot we have here over the bunker not really visualizing the bunker at all i just know i have to fly this onto the edge of the green so i've got about five yards so i need to commit to this shot I hit it a bit long, but we should have a good chance at birdie. Oh my goodness. Dang it. Missed opportunity there, but we'll take a par. The truthful thing is, is I didn't practice from the green backwards when I was growing up. I definitely hit a lot more golf balls and I could probably be a lot more better at golf at this point if I had just practiced more short game. And I realize that now, the short game is the weakest part of my game simply because I don't get up and down that often anymore. It's probably like 50% of the time at this point. So basically, I realize that if I wanna get back to becoming a scratch golfer, consistent scratch golfer, I just have to put a lot of time around the green and just chipping and putting really. Another tip that I had, um, probably close to my freshman year of high school. I was playing with my senior level golfers, I should say, and they, they told me that golf is a lot about mindset. Um, and I had never really thought about that before just because they you know I was excited to just go out and hit the ball. But you really have to start thinking positive thoughts and thinking about how you're gonna hit your next shot, how good you're gonna hit your next shot, and try and, try and not think about standing over this ball and thinking i'm going to slice this into the trees you don't ever want to have thoughts like that you should just back up and try and clear your mind what i'm thinking about is i'm looking at that sand trap thinking i'm gonna put one in it because i hit it so far but in reality i really can't it's about 320 out down the right side of the fairway And I think we just got a horrible bounce. Now, I don't want to make this an entire tip video, but I just wanted to go over some of the basics. And, you know, I, I kind of got my point across, I feel like. It's really just focusing on your mistakes, trying to fix those, 
and actually just realizing what you are doing wrong and just fixing it. So with the golf lessons for today, we're done with those for the most part in the case something, unless something else comes into my head. But we have 95 yards here. I have sand wedge in hand. I have to hit like a, a low draw into this flag is what I'm thinking. A little tough shot here. I pulled it too far left. All right, we shouldn't have too challenging of a chip shot now. Stop. Not my best effort. Here's a little tip for you that has really helped me make more short putts. So you line up and you follow the ball all the way to the hole. Don't hit the ball twice though. Hi y'all, 171 yards here. Gonna hit a solid seven iron and just see how it works out. The wind's kinda in my face. I could probably get eight iron there, but I'm gonna try and get this one on the green. Pulled it left, we're bunker bound. If you saw my follow through, I tried to keep it right. Just turn my club face over a little too much. My reads on my putts just haven't been that great. It's probably because I haven't practiced putting in freaking four months. These are the, the scary putts. Nice. Another good par there. We haven't had a breeze all day until we got to this hole. Of course, it's in the face on the long par four. Let's make it a little bit tougher today. We're gonna put a pretty good firm swing on this ball. Oh no. That went so far right. Kind of hurry up. So we have our first real tester. I um, kind of rushed that second shot simply because I hit it another fairway. I didn't want to hold those guys up, so gotta get up and down now. I'm gonna fly this just onto the edge of the green. I did it. Oh my goodness. I needed another three inches. Dang it. That was a really good putt. I gave it a chance. Still moving. All right. Tap in bogey. Love being on a tee box and the ball's above your feet. That was perfect. I'm really in between clubs right now. 165 yards. 10 mile an hour wind coming from my left and my right. I just killed that ball. <laughs> I hit that ball so hard I got scared that the wind was going to slow that down a lot, but it really did it. a little more than I thought. A little tester for par here. Need to make this to stay even. Man. And that is why you need to practice short game. Coming off of two bogeys in a row, not ideal. We're at one over now. I'm gonna aim at that tree, hopefully play a nice high draw off of it. Holy crap. It doesn't get any better than that. We really need to capitalize on this. We have 181 yards left. You can hear the wind coming in left to right. I'm gonna hit six iron because this is probably playing like 195. And really just try and get it on the green. Oh 
my goodness. We were a yard short. I didn't strike it that well. I thought it was gonna be good. I've got to get up and down for birdie here. That was a great shot. Sprinkler system runs down off of this green into where that ball was. Now we've got a five footer for birdie. See if we can make this and close out a good nine. This is not, not an easy putt. I just had to tap this to get it going. It should break a little right on us. Let's go. Good birdie to close it out. Birdie on one, birdie on nine. We ended up shooting even par on the day. Shared a couple of golf tips with you guys. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe and uh, I'll catch you in part two. Let's see what we end up shooting. Whoever is the first person to guess what I shoot on the next nine holes, holes 10 through 18, I'll send you a box of golf balls.